What's going on everybody? Tom here with Keto Lifestyle and in today's vlog type video I'm going to be showing you guys my keto before and after and I'm going to take you through kind of the whole process It took me to lose the hundred pounds that I'm down so far So if that sounds interesting with you go ahead and hang around and we'll get started on this video But if you have not subscribed yet go ahead and hit the subscribe button because it really does help me out a ton But anyway Let's get started by showing you my before and after. So some of you may have seen this on my Instagram, some of you uh, may have seen it in previous videos, but I don't have a lot of pictures of me when I was that big because I was kind of afraid to take pictures and didn't want to be, you know, remembered as fat. So I always kind of tried to avoid them. So the few that I have, a lot of you have probably already seen because my before pictures don't change. But anyway, I'm going to put up the before and after right now. Now in this before picture, I was probably around 315 pounds. This would was taken in like right around November, December of 2015. I started keto in December of 2015. And then the after picture was taken, I wanna say that was like November, it was right before I left for Mexico and I was about 224 pounds in that picture. I have gone down a little bit since then, but I like this picture and uh, you know, no sense taking a new one if I had a good one to go off of. So now let's get into how I actually lost 100 pounds. I wanna talk about the evolution of my keto diet. Obviously I was not always keto, um, and I didn't actually start dieting strictly keto. As much as I wanted to, that's just not exactly how it happened, and I wish I would have, but um, my weight loss journey began in like December of 2015, right? And I was keto, but I wasn't. I was more paleo than anything. I was not fasting, um, anything like that, but I was, I was eating strictly keto to, to as much as I thought I was. Um, I was eating just meats and vegetables at dinner, I was staying away from the potatoes, the breads, all that other stuff. So I would say I was I was kind of doing lazy keto. I thought I was doing keto, but I didn't really have the knowledge to realize that, you know, I was probably doing things that were not perfectly keto. And that's okay, that's how a lot of people start. So I'm gonna classify that time frame as being paleo. Um, and that kind of came up to March of 2016. So about, you know, three, four months of me doing that. In March of 2016, I actually bought my own house. Um, and at that time, I remember when I first bought the scale for this house, like a week after I moved in, uh, I was 297 pounds. So, you know, in, in that first four months, I lost almost 20 pounds. That's actually pretty decent weight loss. I can't complain about that. Um, now, once I moved in, I started doing like a cyclical keto diet. So, I had read somewhere on the internet that, you know, in order to put on muscle, this, that, and the other thing, you're going to want to do keto in cycles. I had every intention of going to the gym, but that did not happen yet, so I'll update you guys later on in this timeline of when I actually started hitting the gym. But it's important to remember that in March of 2016, I was doing a cyclical keto. So every Friday night, I would start eating carbs, and I would stop eating carbs Saturday night. So I'd have like 27-ish hours of eating carbs per week. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the next kind of big key point in my timeline would be May of 2016. Um, this is kind of when I started doing like a very strict keto diet. I remember weighing in at 285 pounds there. And at this time, I started refeeding every two weeks. Because I had read some things on the internet at this point that were saying, oh, you've only got 15 days worth of leptin in your system. Leptin's important for weight loss, this, that, and the other thing. So I went ahead and just said, you know what, every other Saturday, I'm going to have a day full of carbs. Now keep in mind that this was not a good like healthy carb refeed this was like oh I want donuts I want pasta I want candy I want this I want that like I would go crazy I mean I'm talking like four or five thousand calories of just sugars and garbage and I really don't recommend that this is why I make those recommendations because I've done all the bad things that I tell you guys not to and it's totally screwed me up so that's why I say the things that I do uh, moving on though, so my next big checkpoint for me would be September of 2016. Um, I remember this weigh-in really well because I was basically just leaving for London. I, I The nature of my work, sometimes I work in other places quite often, uh, and I had spent like two weeks in London. I remember being 260 pounds when I came back, so another four months another 25 pounds down. That's pretty good in my opinion. I also remember September because this is when I actually got my gym membership again. I would worked out in high school and a little bit in college but never got really serious about it. Um, so after I bought my house back in March, I did not have a gym membership for that six months. So this is like when I got my membership, got everything back on track with actually going to the gym and I was still refeeding every two weeks at this point. Uh, but because I was working out, I would actually get back into keto faster and it wasn't quite as destructive. I was able to pack on some good muscle. I mean, when I first started lifting 
again, after being out of it for a while, I was bench pressing maybe like 125 pounds and I was squatting like maybe 150, you know, pretty low numbers compared to what I'm doing now. I guess for reference right now, I'm benching like 240, I'm squatting like 375 and I'm deadlifting right around 425 right now. So my weight lifting has definitely improved and some of that was done, you know, in this phase when I was doing, you know, refeeds every two weeks. And I kind of stuck with the same principle until about January of 2017. Now, my lowest sometime before the holidays was about 248 pounds, but in, in January there I weighed in at 255 because, you know, the holidays happen. It happened this year. You just got to work on taking that off. It is what it is. Um, so, you know, I spent the first part of January getting back on track, and uh, I was still refeeding every two weeks at that point. But, again, I was down to 248 at my lowest. I'd kind of creeped up to about 255 in January. And I kind of just stuck to the same same basic thing, just working out four days a week. At that point, I was doing kind of like a bro split where I was doing like a, a chest day, a shoulder day, a leg day, and an arm day. Like just kind of not the optimal training strategy for somebody who's a natural athlete. But I stuck through that until uh, June-ish. And then in June, I was weighing about 242 pounds. I remember this because I was going to a wedding. and. I was refeeding once a month at this point. I was like, you know what? I was reading more papers, reading that leptin isn't that important, refeeding is not that important, but I still didn't want to like torture myself with never being able to eat carbs. It was much more like a mental game than anything. So in my brain, if I say, okay, the first weekend of every month, I can have a slice of cake or a cookie or popcorn at the movies or whatever, it mentally helps me out to know that, hey, in one month, I get to have this again. And it's not really gonna mess me up too bad. Sure, it'll take me three days or so to get back into keto, but then I have the whole rest of the month to burn. I think that once a month is fairly reasonable amount of time to refeed, and to be honest, that's still what I do to this day. Um, so then we're gonna jump forward about two months here, and this puts us in August, and I was 236 pounds when I got back from Sturgis. Now, Sturgis is like one of the world's largest motorcycle rallies. I spent two weeks riding from Las Vegas to South Dakota and back. It was like a little over 3,000 miles, and obviously I was not on keto during this thing, you know drinking heavily, eating whatever garbage I wanted. I was just like, you know what, I'm gonna enjoy myself. This is a man's trip, you know, we're on these motorcycles. If I want a burger and fries, I'm getting a burger and fries. So I was totally not keto for two weeks. And when I say totally not, like I was doing the exact opposite of what you should be and I was not working out one bit. Um, but I got back from that at about 236. So I had lost a good bit of weight between June and uh, August there. Now we skip forward another couple months. Now as soon as as soon as I got back from Sturgis, I did start cutting really hard. So that was in August. I started like just like a really hard, you know, dedicated cut. And keep in mind at this point, I'd lost a lot of weight already. At this point, I'm down like, you know, 80 pounds. So my body's kind of resistant to weight loss slightly. But regardless, I start cutting until November. This is because I went to Mexico in November. And those of you guys who have been around this channel for a while know that, you know, I started this channel about that time. I've got vlogs from the first week I came back from Mexico because I wasn't keto in Mexico either, um, but like I said, this is the time I started keto lifestyle. I'd, I'd cut super hard, and I was down to about 224 pounds, um, which right before I left for Mexico was the, uh, the the after picture that I showed you guys, and I have been you know interjecting pictures of as as I have them through this whole thing. Um, so so that's probably one of the best shapes I've been in. That's currently kind of the shape that I'm in now. Um, I have been kind of doing the same thing, but the holidays did throw me off a little bit. Went on. I tried to stay keto as much as I could, but obviously I was overeating what I was eating, so my weight did tick up a little bit. Uh, as of like February 1st, I was uh, 222 pounds, so that's not bad for me either. So, you know, again, I, I took the holidays off and kind of just did whatever. I mean, I was still mostly keto, but I wasn't tracking. And, you know, once a week or so, I probably had something that wasn't keto because I was with family or something like that. But I tried to stay keto most of the time. I just wasn't very strict on it. And then um, here we are in February, and I'm down to 222. So I've taken off the Christmas weight and dropped another two pounds. And I'm starting my cut. I want to be hopefully around 210 pounds by, like, June. That'll put me in, like, the 8 to 10% body fat range, which would be awesome. You know, hopefully at that point, I'll have abs and everything like that. But... I hope this kind of gives you guys an idea of how my weight loss journey occurred. I know it's like interesting looking at people online that have lost a bunch of weight and not really knowing the full backstory behind it. I mean, I was that guy who would go on YouTube and look at people who've lost a bunch of weight and just 
wonder how they did it and then I would try to do exactly what they thought and expect like instant results and it wouldn't happen. So I guess my point with this video is I just wanted to tell my backstory and give you guys like a timeline of how this actually happened. Um, because A, I wasn't keto the entire time. Like I, I started to try to be keto, but it wasn't perfect. B, I mean, it took me almost two years to lose 100 pounds, which obviously some people have done it faster. I try to do mine well you know, staying healthy and lifting weights and everything like that. And honestly, I put on a solid amount of muscle in the meantime as well. So that, that can't be bad. And I think doing it slower is actually better for you because I have a minimal amount of loose skin. Once I'm done cutting completely, we'll know for sure. But at this point in time, I don't think I'm going to have a big loose skin problem. So take your time, you know, just realize that everybody's journey is a little bit different, but I wanted to give you guys the backstory of my whole journey. But with that, I'm going to go ahead and close the video. If you haven't subscribed yet, go and hit that subscribe button because it really does help me out a lot. If you like the video, leave it a like. And if you have any questions or comments, leave it in the comment section. But with that, I'll see you guys in the next one.